Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 4th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let me start today with a big shout out to the teams of Sands.edu students who took part in the National Cyber League competition. First of all, we got number one in the individual player category as well as the number one too, but that's not it. Uh, we also got number three and number five, I believe, and a total of 10 teams among the top 100 teams out of, uh, I believe, something like a thousand teams and uh, 3,000 plus individuals. So congratulations to all the sans.edu sentinels who participated in the competition. And if you're using our honeypot, uh, first of all, thanks for contributing data, and we do have some updates first of all if you're not running it on a raspberry pi but instead on an ubuntu virtual machine please make sure you update because there is an important update for the firewall rules uh, without the update you will not actually report any data now we also updated the overall installation process, the instructions for that. So if you had problems with it in the past, actually a Raspberry Pi now has a new imager tool that makes it a lot easier to do the initial setup. We also do have an Azure install. So if you want to run it in like a free Azure uh, virtual machine, you can do this as well. AWS uh, should also work. And please let me know if you run into any problems. And then we got an update to the TLS storm or TL storm vulnerabilities that Armis uh, talked about uh, in March. Uh, this time, TL storm uh, 2 affects the same TLS library that we had in TLS storm 1, I guess, nano SSL, but different types of devices. The initial vulnerability mostly affected uh, smart UPSs from a PC or Schneider. This new set of vulnerabilities does affect switches from Aruba and Avaya. The problem here is that uh, nano SSL, the library that implements a uh, TLS here, does... Uh, require a little bit of care in how it's being used, in particular how a developer deals with errors that may show up uh, when the library is being used. By ignoring these errors, you then run into vulnerabilities. And of course, with uh, these sort of IoT style devices, you often have more minimum implementations of these uh, protocols. And that leads here to five different vulnerabilities, some of which uh, can allow remote code execution. The fix here is, of course, uh, to patch and then, of course, uh, make sure that any admin ports and such are not accessible from the internet to reduce your attack surface. And given that uh, this nano SL library is likely being used in additional devices, I wouldn't be too surprised if we'll uh, see a TLS Storm 3 anytime soon. So uh, these vulnerabilities uh, or the basic precautions probably also apply to any kind of similar IoT device. And the second IoT device vulnerability that we have is a bug in the microclip C and microclip C and G library, in particular the DNS implementation. It's well, a good old predictable transaction IDs. You would think they sort of should have gone away by now, but a very simple coding mistake not only leads to incrementing transaction IDs, but they only increment over a fairly small range and then are being recycled. At this point, there is no patch available for this, but it should be released soon, of course, and you still need to patch all the devices using this library. And apparently there is something like 200 plus vendors affected from this vulnerability. Kind of odd that nobody noticed it before. Your quick fix here is to not let these devices talk to external DNS servers, let them talk to an internal recursive DNS server. Uh, that at least uh, limits again your attack surface and makes exploitation a little bit uh, more uh, difficult. 
But with that also definitely make sure that your internal resolver is not affected by this. This could certainly happen if you have some small device or so acting as an internal recursive resolver. And then we got uh, two uh, antivirus stories that I want to cover uh, quickly. Uh, first of all, of course, antivirus products do have uh, vulnerabilities. And apparently some uh, Chinese hackers, uh, cyber espionage group, apparently is exploiting some of these vulnerabilities. I've mentioned some of them before. They're often a uh, privilege escalation of vulnerabilities that are uh, being exploited here. And also related to antivirus systems, uh, Trend Micro apparently uh, today did trigger a false positive on a recent Microsoft Edge update. The file name is MS Edge underscore 200 underscore percent dot pack. So if you see that alert, it's a false positive and updated signatures should have mitigated this by now. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.